We will be covering the people picker today. So in our journey to look at um, a vast majority of our controls uh, within the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, today we're going to really talk about the people picker, um, how that drives the value to select um, different type of entities around um, groups and the user entities inside Microsoft Graph. But before we go into uh, demo mode, I want to do a quick recap of what is the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, or sometimes you might hear it about uh, MGT. So the Microsoft Graph Toolkit is a collection of reusable and framework agnostic components. And it also adds authentication providers for accessing and working with the Microsoft Graph. So think about how you can drag and drop fully functional components inside your web applications, whether they are built with Angular, with Vue, with React, with plain HTML, whatever you want. These controls are web components that are uh, delivering value across all the different frameworks that exist out there. They are also very customizable and they work on any type of modern browser. So that's really the value that we're trying to deliver with the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Why would you use them? First, you want to cut on development time. Building capabilities that are connecting to Microsoft Graph sometimes can be, even if connecting to Graph is usually a task that is quite easy to do, building controls that are delivering rich value is sometimes hard. So we want to save you some time and really focus on your business value by adding these UI components just with a simple line of code inside your application. We're going to look at that um, a little bit later. Um, they're beautiful, but they're flexible. So we make the uh, Microsoft Graph Toolkit controls look like Microsoft 365 leveraging the fluid UI design system that we have, but also we make them fully customizable. So if you want to bring your own branding, your own design guidelines, you can also do that. So providing the default value, but also enhancing the experience with customizing it uh, to your own needs. And finally, it just works everywhere. As it's based on the web standards, any type of browsers, any type of framework, will use that. So you don't have to find a specific library for Angular or a specific library for Vue.js. No, you just need to use the Microsoft Graph Toolkit and it's going to work across the variety of different capabilities that we have in the web today. I always love to say that there's a new JavaScript framework being invented every 15 seconds. So now we're potentially at like four new frameworks since I started this uh, session today. So um, that's the beauty of the Graph Toolkit. We work even with the, the very, very, very newest stuff. Today, we will be talking about the people picker. Well, the people picker is a simple component, but that drives so much value. How many times do you run across a scenario where you want to be able to build a form, um, build a UI that allows people to select users or groups from your organization. Maybe you're building uh, and to build on top of demo from uh, Dan today. Maybe you're building something around emails and you'd love to have like a two fields and a CC field and a BCC field where you can select people from around the organization. Well, that's one of the scenarios that delivered. Maybe you want to assign somebody, you can use this kind of control. And with all the different capabilities and settings that you can put on that control, you can really customize it to your own needs. So how to start? You drop an MGT into your page and you use the MGT people picker component. So let me dive into the code right away. And this is our app, right? Our app starts with we're referencing um, our MGT packages. Here I'm using like plain HTML, the same plain HTML we've been using throughout the, the previous week. So not even like a framework in there, just like plain HTML a couple of simple stylings to make it beautiful. And finally, um, we're using our provider and our login component. The provider connects your app to your Azure AD application and enforces all the different scopes and permissions that you need. Uh, will also pop up for um, your uh, username and password if you're not already logged in, thanks to the MGT login component that is right here on top. You can see it here. And finally, afterwards, we're just going to go through and look at all the different samples we have here. Let me just zoom in this guy a little bit so you can see it in, in um, um, 
little bit better uh, for y'all. So let's start with a simple picker experience. A simple picker experience is around one of the endpoints of graph, which is slash me slash people. That slash me slash people endpoint on graph is super important because it's built out of all the different signals that we have in Microsoft 365, meaning that if today I'm working very closely with VESA, even if VESA is not part of my direct organization or is not a direct report to me or whatsoever, there's still going to be a lot of signals, lots of chats, lots of emails, lots of collaboration around files. And want to make sure that the people you can find in these circumstances are the people that seems the more relevant to you. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So when we're just using the MGT people picker as is, well, when I click here, the people that we're seeing here are the people that are around me. It's not people that are around based on the structure of the organization, but really with people that are around my collaborative style. And here I can select these people. I will be able to select as many of them as I want. And I will be able to refer to these people to do something later. We're going to see that um, in just a bit. But this can be hooked up to any type of apps, any types of um, web form that is relevant. What do you find in there? Well, you find by default the name, the picture, all of that is all customizable thanks to the way that we're building the Microsoft Graph Toolkit with all the templates. So let me just quickly go to our documentation page so you can see it. When you go to our documentation page in graph.microsoft.com, you go to the docs, or you can just do um, aka.ms slash mgt slash docs, um, you can find the, the, the component you're looking for, and you can actually go to the templates. And these templates will tell you, hey, here are all the templates you can overwrite. So if you're not happy with how it's being displayed here. You can always say, hey, you know what? Um, the selected person, so when the, the template that renders selected people, exactly this, you can override it with your own HTML styles and your own HTML controls in there. So here, you don't even have to think about how this plays out. Uh, you're going to have to redo the entire control. No, you just need to re redefine this specific template here. We have an example of that we did last week with our people component, but it's really up to you to define this. All the documentation is right here. So now, what else does it do? It allows me to delete some of the, of the person's wrong choice, but also it allows me to leverage other MGT controls like the people card, for instance. So if I go on top of uh, Joanna here, I will be able to pull up the full person card of this person. So you see how all of these controls are very tightly connected together and really delivers uh, really um, interesting value. So that's the simple way or the simpler way to use the MGT people picker. But let's say here that you want to specifically uh, define a group of people, not the people around you, but the people that are in a specific group, you can also do this. So when we're looking at this example here, we can change first here, the placeholder, see it here. You can have a selection mode. So let's say I just want to select one single one. And finally, I could say group, uh, group uh, dash ID equals, and here you can paste in the ID of a group, or you can pass in via JavaScript based on the result of a selection from I don't know, a group picker control. And then automatically it's going to do that. It's going to uh, limit. So right now let's, let's just use it uh, without limiting it. Uh, now you see uh, you were able to find your best colleague. So now I'm popping up again, the trending people around me. I'm going to select Alex and I won't be able to add anybody else. The controls becomes disabled for adding new people in there. I can clear and start again and choose whatever you think. Let me go on to um the uh next one a simple people picker for groups so as part of the mgt people picker you always have the ability to say what you're looking for by default here it would say any and why that means you can look for anything 
But in my case, you know what? I want to specifically look for groups because I want to notify a group of people based on the different groups created in Azure Active Directory. What I can do here, I can go here. And now you see the experience is not the same. The experience now allows me to find the most recent groups around me. And now I can say, uh, maybe I'm going to go in leadership. I want to notify leadership. I can do that. So you see now from a people picker, it's also a group picker that you can have here. I can go this one and this one, and now I can do whatever I want uh, with this. When it's when you're used, you can use distribution group, you can use uh, Microsoft 365 groups, you can use security groups, any of those. You can also limit um, some of them. Right here, I think it would be group type, for example, I think it's called unified. I go unscripted here, which is never a good idea. And there you go. Here's all the unified, which are all Microsoft 365 groups or potentially even Teams. So now I can go in here and select um, all of them directly from um, the people bigger. Something also that is super relevant, especially when you're working with people within groups, you have the ability on a people picker to say, I want to connect to this specific group ID but also I want to have transitive search. So it means that not only I'm gonna find the people within the specific group, but I'm also gonna find the people that are in groups that are within my group. So if your group has different um, structures, a group could have multiple groups. Well, in this case, you can use transitive search and you can find people from any of these nested groups right in here that you can use. That's a great way to use um, and just when you're building, I would say, advanced scenarios. Now, we want to build a little bit of interactivity. For example, we want to have a people picker with this selection change. So first here, we're going to build just a, a regular people picker. And underneath, I'm going to have an MGT people component where I'm going to showcase the selection from my people picker. I'm going to do it. I'm going to hook this ID to a JavaScript function. So let me go to the JavaScript function right here. So here you see I'm basically adding an event listener that is called the selection change to this ID. So basically MGT will fire or will trigger the selection change event when there's something new that like when the selection inside the combo box or inside the, the picker changed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign my other ID, the selection showcase, which is my list of people, I'm going to assign it to the details that are coming from my event here. Automatically, we add all the details from the MGT uh, picker, so all the data that is currently selected, we add it there, and then afterwards, we're just going to display it. So for example, if I go here and I select Sebastian, now you can see that just at the bottom here, we have Another uh, thing that was done, if I add Lydia, it's going to add Lydia here. So you see how you can be very interactive and how you can interact with the different activities happening inside um, the picker. So if I do this, it's also going to remove it. And if I do this now, we're back to the beginning. So it's really how we're liking to uh, think about the people picker because now it really allows you to build your custom logic in there. Some other things you can do with the people picker is right here is to predefine which will be the user IDs that will be selected. Think about if you're storing your user IDs in a database or maybe you already have that array of people that you have access to. Here you can simply just pass in an array of user IDs and we're going to do a default selection on these. So it means that I can continue adding some of them. I can add these guys, but they will always be there. But then I can also remove them. It's really up to me. You can do the exact same thing for groups. So if you want to uh, do a default selection on groups, you can do it using the default selected group IDs. Something you might want to do also is get data from another API or even from graph. In this case, for example, what I want to do is I want to here add all my direct reports as the pre-selected ones. But I don't have a way to specify which endpoint this is all about. And I don't know, because it's dynamic. So I don't necessarily have 
all these user IDs. So what I, we've been doing is we added an ID here so we can hook ourselves onto this specific people picker. And in JavaScript, what we're going to do is we will be doing a call to graph. We're going to validate that we are logged in. And then afterwards, we will be calling the slash me slash direct reports, which is an API that is available that yields all my um, um, all of my uh, direct reports, where I will be able to assign to the pre-selected people the result that value. And from there, I will be able to assign this. So this can come from either from graph, but it can also come from any of your API. And then the, the here, we're going to be able to play with it. Something also interesting, we have put this in read only, just because we disabled it. Maybe you're using in the display form, you don't want to uh, enable people to modify it, then you have the ability to do it here. Finally, something that we enabled also is a people picker or almost like an email address picker where you can add any email. For example, here I can do seb at outlook. Dot com. Then I can just hit enter this dear at vesa.com. Is that your email, Vesa? Um, where it's you can add dear Vesa at Microsoft.com. Uh, there you go. I, I would not be surprised that would be true, actually. Um, and you would have the way to add any email address. So if you're building, I don't know, an email client or you want to do any of that, this really, really allows you to do these kind of uh, scenarios. So if you want to look into um, the people picker, I recommend that you are going to any of our resources, our repo, our docs, the samples that I'm building right now. You can have all of the previous sessions, including today's one. Our playground, if you want to go play with MGT and if you want to learn, aka.ms slash MGT slash learn. Back to you, Vesta. Excellent. Thank you, Sebastian, on that one. Thank you.